Can everybody hear me? Can y'all hear me? Y'all should be able to hear me. Want to make sure. Yeah, I hear you. All right, all right. All right, we're going to wait on some other folks to join. It's only uh, coaches in here. We got about four more people waiting on. Do, 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 do. Some more people to join before we get started. I am going to record this and then put it in the group chat because Coach said I got a quiz y'all on Friday. <laughs> so just letting y'all know. Let's see, let's see. We up to six people in here. Gonna give everybody a few more minutes before we kick off. Give everybody about two or three more minutes before we kick off. While we kind of waiting on everybody to come in, I'm going to go ahead and share my first screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All We still waiting on, um, still getting everybody else a few minutes. All right, guys, Coach will update y'all starting tomorrow on um, some of the stuff that have happened um, about us going uh, back, so we'll be ready for that. Six of y'all in here. Yep. Everybody has about two more minutes. Um, let's see what this is. Uh, we got somebody else joining. Jakeem said he downloaded the app. Okay. We won't be too far ahead by the time they get in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And there's other folks coming in the room. I'll let them in. Can everybody see this first play right here? Can everybody see it? 
Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So this first play, guys, that we're going to look at today is called Seattle. Yes, sir. Seattle, Seattle is full verse. I mean, everybody, quote, unquote, is running deep downfield. So we got to discuss, though, how it looks, and then we'll uh, talk about um, the routes and et cetera. So the first thing I want to do when I talk about Seattle is this. Me and Coach kind of got a signal for it because between me and Coach James, we'll be signaling to the quarterback and the wide receiver. I'm probably going to put you guys with Coach, I'm probably going to put you on wristbands to start off simply because we didn't have spring football. And even if we go back in June, we may not be able to do seven on seven immediately so but um i want you guys to be thinking of signals because whatever you guys say is pretty much what i'm gonna roll with because you guys got to remember it so we're calling it seattle okay so this here is liz all right so primarily what i'll let you guys know is if we face teams that play a lot of one high safety that's when we'll run a lot of straight four verticals okay so as you see here, outside receivers, what I want you to know is this. And here's some of the language that I want you guys to know. You may have heard it before. You're going to run deep. And if at 10 yards you are capped, you're going to snap it. What does that mean, Coach Banks? That means you're going to go vertical unless that dude is so scared of you that he has backed up so far that you could not get past him after 10 to 12 yards. If after 10 to 12 yards, you can't beat him deep because he's still three to four yards away from you, you are going to run a comeback. That's why we have the dash lines on your route if you play X or Z. So you're going deep unless you are cap. Cap means like a bottle cap. means I can't open it. I can't get past it. Hopefully, we don't play many teams that are like that, but we may play a few teams who are that scared of us that they back up everybody. That'd mean good thing. You'll break it off. You'll still be wide open. The other the other ones are whoever the Y is, if you're in, in trip, you have what is called a lock gift. A lock gift means that you are going to go vertical no matter what across the field. You are not going to break off your vertical. You have to get to the other numbers. And I'm going to give you one. Say, hey, buddy, hey, I'm on the phone. I, we're going to do it in a second. I'm on the phone. And so you can't break it off. You have to go all the way across. So if you see on the drawing is you have to get all the way to the hash and you have to keep going. Whoever the middle receiver is, the H, you have the same capped principle, which means you are going deep unless your guy is too high and you can't get past him and you break it off. Primarily, that's why we don't like to run this against two two deep safeties as we have in the picture, the B and the free safety, because then it becomes y'all have to work on breaking off routes, which if we had all summer, we would have ran this play about 20 times a day, so you get used to it. But it's a little harder when you hadn't had that timing to get caught up with the quarterback because you guys have to be in sync. But those are your options. That's why we technically we could call this against any team we play because once you know how to break it off, you'll always be open. All right, so now I'm going to show a couple of clips. Uh, let me see. It may not. Let me know if y'all can't see the clips, because it may be funny. Can y'all see the clips? Can y'all see this? Can I see the picture? Can y'all see the, y'all don't see no film. All right, hold up. Let me get to that then. No. So, I got you. I, that's what I ain't think. Let me go back, stop that, and do it again. I need to be able to show y'all the clips of the plays, too. Hold up, hold up. Uh, yeah, I'll hold up. Yeah, hold up. I got y'all. It's going to take me a second here. It don't want to show y'all the film. Let me go. Show all windows. That's the one I want. All right. Can y'all see that now? Can y'all see the film now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
So all right, here we go. I'll show y'all a version of it right here of Seattle. All right. I really don't want to on my end it's got sound, so I'm trying to turn the sound off. There we go. All right, so we came out here and we can run this from real and from right. So we're gonna come out here and write. As you can see, this team is one high. All right. Because the running back is on the left, that means that this receiver is the lock receiver. This one has the option to run a dig if need be. Both of these outside guys are going vertical unless they need to, to snap it off. The quarterback is going to be laid on his read. Right now, his number one lock receiver is open. He's already passed this guy. He should be hitting him right now. Because he's late on his throw, he, had, he allows the free safety time to get over it. We still completed the pass for a big game, but the quarterback has to be on it sooner. And so, KJ, we've already talked about this, but for you other guys, this is what I want y'all to see in a second, too, because I want you guys to start understanding this. When y'all get good at this, we can teach y'all what is known as the five-yard rule. It's really seven yards, but I want y'all to see it. Everybody see this fat referee right here. Everybody see this dude right here. He lines up at seven yards. If these guys are below seven yards, that means they're in some type of press coverage. That tells us it's going to be cover one or cover three. If in your first three steps, we should be able to beat these guys. If not, then we have a problem. So we already know that guy's lined up four yards away. It should be a quick anticipation by the quarterback. He, can't, he drops the ball, he has to come back over. But we're still able to get the completion. So everybody saw his route. I want you guys to focus on the other route. So because all of these guys are below five yards, this one will be the closest depth. He'll be off about six. You can watch what I mean about whether they need to snap their routes or not. So as you can see with the picture, there wouldn't be any need for anybody to snap their route because at the quarterback's last step, everybody is at least even with their DB. In this case, number one is past this guy. If you I have a question. Any question. Yep. Yeah, I got a see. question. So yep. uh, the outside receivers, you always have the option to run a comeback. Yeah, that's only if you can't beat your guy. Like, if you can beat your oh. guy, don't ever stop. Yeah. But so, like, can, look up top. Yeah. Like, if this dude, and I'm going to show you another If the dude is playing way off, you'll be able to. But look, look at this one. And you're going to see in the next example what I'm talking about. This dude is, is real close up on him. Ain't, ain't going to be no need for no comeback in this one. You're going to be able to blow right past that guy. Yeah, you go. This guy might be the only one that deserves a comeback, but just look up top. You can just watch up top in this receiver. Let's watch him the whole way. Why would he ever need a comeback, right? He passed that guy. He just got to keep going. Got you. And um, the slot, when a running back is on their side, that's when they have the option to run, to uh, run dig. Yeah, so the quarterback will get protection call. So the if you if we in – Right, and the running back is on your side, you're more so of um, the secondary guy. The quarterback is going to be locked on the guy to his right, to the opposite side. But it'll be on your wristbands or it'll be in the call. When the coach calls 50 and 60, the quarterback, it'll be his responsibility to tell you which one of you is, is locked and which one of you is free. Uh, everybody, see the, everybody see the example right now out of Liz? Everybody see this one? Everybody still with me? Yeah. yeah all right. So now this guy right here, number three guy, he has come all the way across to get on this hash. This guy has to stay on his hash. This guy's outside releasing. He's already outside the numbers. And this guy's outside releasing outside the numbers. They're one high. And the reason why when we call Seattle guys, we want you guys to get maximum space. Because with one high, and this dude is in the middle of the field, he got a lot to cover. All right? So here we go. This guy, the number one guy, 
he's covered, right? He had to go under. It's taking too long. The free safety has backed up out of picture. If you notice here on the slot, though, that's one-on-one -on -one because the free safety has backed up out of picture. Scared of this guy. The quarterback is already on his second read with the ball getting ready to be thrown. And there it is because they were one-on-one -on -one, because the free safety can't cover both if they're in one high. Run again the full way through. He looks at number one option, not there because that free safety is backing up, and it's one-on-one -on -one with number two. We're talking about receivers, and you it is working with each other, breaking it off. I want you guys to look at the top outside receiver on this route. I want you guys to look at the top outside receiver on this route. He breaks it off. It's kind of hard to see, but he shouldn't have because that guy was tight on him. But that's what we talk about, having to understand the timing. You can break it off, but with that that cornerback playing that close, you don't get that same separation. He just got to run past that guy. That guy's still in his back, brother. The thing about this play, guys, what makes the difference is in this one, the quarterback did his, he took his number one read, right, as his inside slot because that's the guy he believed was going to be open. All right. Um, y'all hold up. I got to bring it, I got to bring it back up. I got, a, I got a third clip for y'all. I got a third clip for y'all, but I got to go back and share it because it stopped the screen share. All right, here we go again, guys. The same thing, right? Same play. We on the boundary. Is one high. This guy's got to work all the way across. This guy's going to stay on. As you can see, we get press coverage. So this is what I talk about when you get good at running routes. If the quarterback comes and looks up and he sees this guy within five yards, he can always check to this single receiver as his number one option, which is what the quarterback did in this case. Took his steps. He's already beat. And there you go. And show it again. So we get one high. We like attacking teams. And, guys, here's the good news early on. When I watched y'all film from last year, because you guys did such a good job of running the ball, a lot of teams played you guys just like this. They were so concerned on stopping Quincy and Thompson from running the ball that they put guys in the box. Cool. I hope they try that this year. And we'll just do the same thing, get quick passes and then loosen them up and run the ball again. But that's Seattle. Do we have any questions on Seattle? No, sir. No, sir. All right. So let me find another play I'm going to go over. And that's right. I showed it to you from right, so you've already saw it. That's the same. See what I'm talking about? Lock is away from this guy, and then he has the option. Running back late. So I'm coming back to some of these plays and trying to show y'all two or three a day, um, a week until we get there. What's the other play I'm going with today? Where that? Where that? All right. So guys, this is um, a space and concept. It's showing it from Ace Rip. We can also run it from Rip and Liz. It's called Houston, all right? And this one has a lot of options. The tight end, or if this was in Rip, whoever number three is, he has a sit route right over the ball. The number two guy has a corner route. Number three has a sit route past the first linebacker he sees. So as soon as you get behind that first line back in that window clear, you stop. Backside has a swing, has a swing route. And then it's one-on-one -on -one to the backside receiver. He has a seed out. If this guy is all seven-plus yards and the quarterback like it, he can take that at first. If not, he'll come to this side. So that's kind of letting you guys know how the quarterback is being taught. This inside guy is his number one read. If it's straight man coverage, he's going to be looking at this corner route heavy if it's straight man coverage. Then he comes in to the Z to the swing, and so he makes it hard on teams to do it. 
So I'm gonna show you a couple of clips from this. Does Z have a curl on that on this play? So it's a sit route. So in other words, so if you look at the picture right now, right, as soon as he gets right past this linebacker here, he should just stop. It's not a curl. It's like you coming in on the inside six route. You aiming for six yards. So, if so I'm going straight Z, to it. Aim... Huh? I'm I'm going straight to it. You, yep, you aiming two yards straight yeah. behind this guy. You're going straight to it right now. So this is his back foot. You're aiming right here on the line. But as soon as he gets the hell out your way, you stop. Even so, if Micah, you don't get that. so, Micah, that would be like a snag route. You remember the snag route we ran? Yes, sir. Yep. Of course you talked to me about that route. Yeah, like yes, a snag route. That's exactly what it is. So, quarterback's coming up, remember, he's looking. He doesn't like his pre-snap, guys, because, remember, this guy is less than seven yards. So, that's a hard throw on the out. So, he already don't like that. Yes, inside snag or his corner, the outside sag, the swing. The it isn't cover one. He isn't thinking, per se, coming off the ball that the corner is going to come open, though it could. You look, there goes that first inside snag. Now, Micah, this guy runs it wrong. He should be coming behind that linebacker, but he doesn't. He's stopping right in front of that linebacker. He hits the inside snag, and we rumble for it yards ahead. The good thing about the clips that I brought over, it should have more than one version for y'all to see. I need, I need to see that again. Yeah, oh, right got, back. I, I ain't see what he who he throw to. So then, I'm gonna I'm show it again. The, the right, this is tight version right there. The inside snag is his first guy, and that guy actually got too deep. But that was his first guy, and it'll go back to the beginning, and we can run it again. Here you go again. Everybody kind of find your position to watch what your guy watch what your guy does. So we talk about the importance of why this guy should go behind his linebacker. So him going in front of his linebacker, which is wrong, causes this linebacker to guard him. The only good news from that would have been if we would have needed the swing he would have caught it with a ton of grass to run. But they left the big fella wide open. That's because of the corner route. But if you go behind him, this guy either has to back up or he definitely has to leave the swing wide open. I'm going to show it to you again from another view. So same play. All right. So here it is. Again, pre-snap, he don't really like that speed out because that guy's kind of short on coverage. KJ, what kind of coverage do you think this is? Cover one. Why do you believe it's cover one? Because they got that one high and the rest of the linebackers under the deck. There you go. Because they got one high guy and the rest of the line in the corners are underneath the hard deck. So the corner could be looked at here because, hey, we believe it's cover one. So the quarterback can peak corner who is inside snag to the outside snag to the swing. The video. So he could have peaked corner. There goes his corner route right there. The big fella is open. This guy again because this he's coming right behind that linebacker, making that linebacker make a decision. And he threw it in there and, and picked the window. You can see it again. His man covered, so he does a better job of getting behind this linebacker. Quarterback could have picked the corner, though, on this one, because I told you his man covers, and you'll see the corner route come open in this. It was cover three. So the corner route comes open because that dude backed all the way off. He does come behind the linebacker, and the quarterback goes there. But as you can see right now, that corner would have been a viable option too. So even though the quarterback thought it was a coverage and it wasn't, when guys execute what they're supposed to execute, the quarterback has options. So showing it to you again.
There goes a corner, but he's able to fit it into his inside snag. All right, let me show y'all one more clip. Is there any way you can stop the uh, video from being so choppy? Probably it's showing up choppy. What I'm gonna have to do is this. Let me see if it do it. It probably won't do it. It's gonna be choppy because I'm on my computer and I'm talking to y'all. So when I show you the replay, it'll look, when you see the replay, it'll look better. Next time, it'll be my fault. Next time, what I do is I project it from my iPad. That way, it'll be coming from a different source. But that's probably why it's copy right now. Uh, what's the name of this play again? Houston. All right, so here it is, guys. So this is against Heritage, which would be good because Heritage runs the same exact defense still to this day. All right, pre snap. Quarterback could have threw this out. All right, I think this dude ran a slant on this one for some reason because look how deep this corner is. I'm telling you now, Heritage blitzes guys from every which way. So that's what they do on this play, and it works. But when everybody runs their route and the quarterback steps up into the pocket, good things can happen. We got the inside snag. Got the corner, the outside snag, and the swing. I already pretty much know my outside snag is not a viable option. If I'm the quarterback, I can take pre-snap. He does it. But then I'm looking inside snag, outside snag, the swing. So I'm going to run the whole play through the first time. Steps up in the pocket, inside snag is covered. And he found this outside snag because that linebacker took the swing. You'll be able to see it from, um, I got a whole bunch of film on this one. So from the end zone view too, I think you'll be able to see it. So Harry just came with the blitz, inside snag is open, but that outside snag got behind the linebacker. And that's why when the quarterback stepped up, he was able to find him. We're going to show it this year, show it again from the end zone view. So that'll help some of you guys see what, see what we're talking about. So here it is. Inside snag, quarterback didn't have time. That second snag came right behind the linebacker. And he found him. Y'all want me to run through him again? I can show yeah, you. I'm gonna show this clip. I'm gonna show this clip again. So you can continue to watch the guy. Somebody phone breaking up on me. Repeat the question. You got a video. That's mine. He's kicking me from the uh, the meeting. He keep going in and out. Oh, okay. One more time, Coach. It's going through. It's going to go through again. I'm going to let it keep going through. All right. This is Houston, right? This is Houston. Guys, I like this play a lot because it's simple, and all of y'all can touch the ball, and it's hard to stop. So if coach comes to me like, throw the ball, and I can't think of a pass, I'm probably just going to call Houston because it's simple. Can I see it drawing up real quick? Yep, I'll go back to it. Everybody see it again? We got questions. No, I 
I, I do want to show that. Coach, I just want to just make a point. Guys, we will be, like Coach Banks said, on wristbands probably until we feel confident that you guys have got it. If not, we'll continue to do the wristbands. But we're going to try to limit as much as you have to learn, but also give you some uh, crutches to learn this stuff, okay? Uh, and guys, we want you to say, um, we got signals, but we'll let you guys come up with some of this stuff too, because we want to be able to do it. We should be able to say, Rip Houston, and to take two, three signals from me, to coach, me and Coach James, and y'all should be able to get it and roll with it. So that if we're trying to go fast, we can go. But at the same time, we'll start off on wristbands until we need to. Even on the wristband, though, we signal is on the wristband. You got to look down and go. I do want to show you a screen. This screen is primarily not for you, but I need you to know what you're doing. And then I'm going to show you a version of it that I can run to you. Um, and so it's primarily for the running back, but it can be ran for the, from the receivers as well. So I want to show you that. So the name of this screen is Maserati. Rip Maserati. All right. All you're doing is running your behind downfield as fast as you can, getting the heck out of the way. And after about six steps, if you hear the hear the crowd screaming, send the running back at the ball, block somebody. But the screen is primarily for the running back. All you're doing is – and the reason why I'm showing this screen to you today is so the, the wide receiver screens first because this screen is supposed to look like Seattle. Everybody understand me? And so after we run four verts a couple of times, we throw the screen to the running back. But everybody thinks it's four verts because we didn't ran that, which is Seattle. And so these two screens go hand in hand. So that's why we're showing this to you uh, first. And then it's the same swing motion that the running back makes off of Houston. So all these plays start to look alike. So what's your responsibility? The first two clips are going to be to the running back. The third one I'll show you will go to the receiver. So I just want you to see it. What are you doing? you just running downfield. So we called it. All these guys going to do is run downfield against Petrie Ridge. Going to throw it to the running back. If you make one block, then the running back will do the rest. Y'all don't even see the receivers. They all ran downfield. Now, as I say, you just got to be aware. And you just, and as you see here, the receivers just escort the running back to the end zone. Real simple screen. I say it primarily goes to the running back. I let the clips run through twice. Then I show you the receiver version. And it's off of Seattle. And all you're doing is just running deep. Because teams think, well, they're going to throw Seattle. They're going to go, they're going to uh, throw four verts because they've been throwing it twice, three times a game. And every time we see them on film, they, they throw this two, three times a game. Well, when we get teams backing up because they think we're running four verts, we'll run the screen. And then they start backing up, and we throw four verts again. All right, I'll show you one more version of it to the running back, and then I'll show you the wide receiver version. Same thing here against Tucker. I'll show it to you again. All right, let me uh find the let me find the uh the version for y'all for the 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 the, 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 the. Nope, that ain't it. That's to the running back too.
All right, y'all hold up because I thought I had diversion. I thought I had diversion for you guys. I see I don't have it. Give me a second. I'm gonna get it. Uh, let me find out where it is in this clip I got, guys, because I got it. And so I'm trying to get it to you. Can y'all see this? Can y'all see it now? Yeah, we said. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So in this one, guys, we ain't empty. So somebody had to take the running back spot. So now we just pick a receiver. We're going to pick the Y. And what's happening is everybody else is going to run for vert. Late side is in prevent. It's third and 20. So um, in third and 20, everybody else, or it's first and 20, excuse me, everybody going to run deep. And the wide receiver is going to run right underneath to replace the running back. So here you go. And he just hesitated a second. Let the lineman come past him, and then he took off. So while Maserati is primarily a running back screen, we can throw it to the receivers as well. We may even one week, um, if we play in a team that blitzes, I'll put one of you guys at tight end and throw it. So we can take either one of y'all. We can take you, Eric, you, Micah. You ponders, any of y'all, man, whoever, and just throw you a tight end and send everybody deep and let you run it. Now, we probably can't do that, but once a game. But I guarantee you it would be a big pass play for you because when teams blitz, they stop paying attention to the screen. And so that's the same thing we do here. You see how many yards he gets, and all he did was take two steps. So a wide receiver got – wide receiver hit somebody in the back. so. That big play went away because of what that's you no know, the blind side block. And y'all, that's a whole nother conversation we'll have. Any questions, guys, about these three plays? No, no sir. No, nah. no, sir. All right, so let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm recording Wait, what's this. That, what's that last one called? Maserati. So, Seattle. So, Seattle. Maserati. Maserati. Yep, Seattle, Houston, and Maserati. Seattle was for Verts. Houston was the snags with the corner. And then Maserati. All the we made all the uh screens car names. So when I show you the next three plays next week, it'll be car names. So like next week we'll go over plays like Green Bay and Lexus and um Pittsburgh probably. Um, so there'll be those type of names. So what I'm going to do is this, guys, all right? I'm going to upload this to YouTube, and I'm going to put it in the group chat. When I upload to YouTube, I got to hide the link so that uh, other schools don't find our place. But I'm going to upload to YouTube this whole Zoom, so you better watch all 40 minutes of it. On Friday, I'm going to send you a Google form, which is basically a quiz, asking you what does this receiver do on this? I just want to see if you watch the video and if you remember stuff so that we can fix it. The more you guys remember, though we're not able to do it, determines how fast we can install once we get going. And so, like I say, Coach will start to update you as we're getting information about workouts starting soon. But we may not still be able to do as much passing as we want to. But me and Coach want to make an attempt to throw the ball more but coach is very, very adamant to me that you guys got to know it. So I need to know that you guys know it. Because as y'all know, boo-boo rolls down here, right? Y'all want to catch the ball, I want to throw it. But if we, I call a pass and a couple of passes and you don't know what you're doing, y'all know coach going to uh, come get him a grill. And if you get in my grill, I'm going to have to get in y'all grill in private. 
And then he ain't gonna let us throw the ball no more. We'll be watching Jet and Power for three hours on Friday night. And y'all know I ain't lying, am I? So nope. um, make sure you yeah. doing some studying. Yes, sir. Anybody got any questions before we end it? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. All right, fellas, so that's good. We'll meet again Wednesday, too. Like I said, give me to tonight. So I'll probably put the link in there for y'all tomorrow. Then just watch it at your time. You ain't got to watch the whole thing, man. Like I tell KJ, do stuff in 15-minute segments. This recording going to be about 45 minutes. Do 15 minutes, then walk away and go do something else. Do 15 minutes on Friday. Take your quiz. If you aren't sure, look for some. Watch 15 more on Saturday. You don't have to watch all 40 minutes of this at one time, guys. 15 minutes a day, and you will be amazed at how much stuff you pick up. Uh, Coach James, Coach Carrera, anything y'all want to say before we end it? No, I'm good, guys. Just make sure you watch that YouTube. And, um, again, like I always say, you want to be as knowledgeable about this stuff as you can be before we get there because um, we're going to have a lot to learn and a lot to make happen when, when they say we're ready. But uh, be prepared because it's coming soon. Good to see y'all. Make sure y'all are working out, doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, these Mustang games, take them serious because I know some, some guys aren't saying anything in their group chats. All right, study, focus, get ready to go. Love y'all. See y'all soon. All right, guys, that's it, man. Um, I'm going to let y'all, because I know we got a quarterback in here. I know y'all been calling y'all stuff. Quick six, we're going to have to come up with something for the offense. I always had something I call my offense, but I want y'all to make it something unique to y'all. And whatever y'all figure out, I'm going to let y'all marinate on that for right now. So we ain't going to end on nothing. We're going to come up with our own offensive quarterback wide receivers tagline. Yeah, I'm going to go get wristbands when school starts, and we'll wear it ourselves. We ain't going to let nobody else wear it except for us. So that way we can communicate with each other. Then every time we score, we're going to go show the wristband to Coach Harrison. Don't worry, I'll be there first. Don't, don't even worry about it. Him and Coach Fike, if I hear one more thing about his cornerbacks doing different footwork in a group meeting, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something at the screen. So, you know, I like to have, guys, I like to have fun and compete. It's the only way we get better. So y'all think of something for the offense. I don't care what we call, what y'all call y'all selves. And Newton, they call they self, when I was at Duluth, they call they self um, Dirty Boys. When I was at Newton, they call they self Black Shirts, which means that they ain't take no stuff. And every time somebody did something, we went and got Black Shirts, and they earned it. So if you knocked somebody out, you made a great block one game, then we wore Black Shirts to practice, like, on Thursday. We wore it to school underneath certain ties on Friday. So whatever y'all come up with, we're going to make a theme out of it. So just be thinking about it. I don't care what you call it here. We can be uh, Creek Boys, Quick Six on three for all I care. And y'all think of it as, as y'all thing. You going to say something, Coach James? Maybe that's just the screen. No, I'm good, brother. Go ahead. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see y'all. Um, on the on the call tomorrow, and then I had this film uploaded before the call. Y'all be safe out here. You too, folks. All, right. All right, y'all. Uh, KJ, I'm gonna uh, right, when I get back, me and you got to go to the uh field. I gotta work with you for sure. Back, for sure. For the, for any receivers, you, gotta, you gotta come over here, bro. I just I'm a, I just got home right now, so any receivers who trying to come with me and Quincy uh with Coach Clark, just hit me up. Where at? Yeah, right. uh, we don't know yet. I'm going to send y'all to Eddie. Yeah, I'll get right, back this there. weekend. Right. All right, I'm going to get with you, Micah. All right. All right Speak to sure. me, KJ. Hit me up. I got you, Eric. I got you, Eric. All right, All right boys. All right. All right, Coach. All right, fellas.